Now, if a vegetarian is eating predominantly starches and sweets, then, of course, that's going to be very difficult to be healthy or fit. So i rather uh, not say, you know, vegetarian is good, the carnivore diet is good. I'd rather say that high-quality, nutrient-dense, mm-hmm. sane plant and animal foods are the optimal choices. All right, so as long as we're busting myths, calorie myths and protein myths, let's move on to fats a little bit because there's a lot of mythology around fats and misunderstandings around, as there is with everything in nutrition, it seems like, but especially when it comes to protein and calories and fats. Give us your take on fats, good fats, bad fats. Can you lose weight by using fats? And What about the whole idea that there's no insulin that's associated with fat absorption and perhaps maybe even you can eat all the fats you want without gaining weight? And then I do want to talk about insulin a little bit. It is absolutely a myth that you can eat all the fat you want and not gain weight. That's the, the, it, there's a, there, it's very, so two things that are really important. One, eating more natural fats instead of starches and sweets is the single most important shift we need to make as our culture. We should be using fat as our primary fuel source, natural fats, mm. rather than processed starches and sweets. That said... That's huge, yeah, though, Jonathan. That, that, that's a huge statement. We should be eating more natural fats, getting our energy from fats more than from uh, uh, other food groups. Is that correct to lose weight? It is, and it's not. You do not need to take my word for it. It is shocking, but go look, for example, the chair of the Department of Nutrition at the Harvard School of Public Health. He has published entire papers saying, like the title of the paper is, Is Dietary Fat the Cause of Obesity? No. It's, it, this is not controversial in actual academic circles. The highest, the highest of ranks, the Harvard Medical School, in the Journal of the American Medical Association, says as much. It just hasn't permeated the mainstream. Wow. Now, now, certainly, when we say fat, that's kind of a catch-all word. Disting, how do you distinguish fats? There's probably lots of ways to distinguish it, but how does Jonathan Baylor distinguish the various types of fats? So you always want to start by saying what are the fats found directly in nature. So I like to call the, the food group in, in question whole food fats. So an egg is a whole food that is predominantly fat. Nuts are a whole food that are predominantly fat. So I recommend eating whole food fats. So mm. salmon, whole food that contains lots of fat, grass-fed beef, whole food which contains some fat. You want to get your fats from whole food natural fats now how how about uh how about the idea of cooking and processing even in natural fat what is like nut butters for example any problems there you want to be careful because there's it's very easy to overeat fat if all you ate was fat so you want to have a balance of fat good fats good carbohydrate and good protein. Good carbohydrate are generally things like non-starchy vegetables, low fructose fruits. Good proteins are what we talked about, humanely raised animals, and good fats are these natural whole food fats. You need to eat all of those things to have a healthy, nutritious, life-sustaining diet. And I would recommend starting with non-starchy vegetables first, then moving on to your protein, and then following up with fats. You're talking about in terms of a meal? Exactly. So you start off with start, uh, with uh, non-starchy veggies, kind of get to the fiber to fill, up, fill you up, I take it, and so you'll be eating less. Is that right? There's three primary factors, or maybe three and a half, that influence satiety, and this has just been proven over and over and over in the research community, and that's the, the stretch that food places on your digestive system, and so you need fiber and water to do that. Mechanically, Protein, mechanically which, stretching the stomach, in other words. Exactly. So you need to eat a certain volume of food, and that's why vegetables are so useful. And then protein and fat have hormonal impacts that trigger satiety centers in your brain. So eating a lot of vegetables, a good portion of protein, and then some whole food fats are going to make you feel full and satisfied without overeating. Whereas if your entire meal was butter, it would be very easy to overeat and undernourish yourself. Do you make a distinction between uh, essential and unsaturated fats versus saturated fats like butter and coconut oil? I like to look at what comes along with the fat. So I focus less on ratios of fats and more on saying if you focus on foods that provide you with the most essential nutrients, you will get the correct ratio of fat. So, for example, focusing on macadamia nuts, salmon, cocoa, coconut, without having to do omega-3, omega-6 ratios and balances, Mm -hmm. focus on food first, the foods we've talked about here, and your fats will take care of themselves just like they did for every other person who ever lived prior to the current three generations. How about salt? Does that fit into satiety at all? Salt from a 
in terms of you salting your own food, it would be very difficult for you to take in. If you do not eat processed and packaged foods, an amount of salt that would be bad for you. Salt only becomes a problem when you eat non-food because the amount of salt that these edible products contain in them is, is ridiculous. You would never put that much salt on food you prepared yourself. So you're saying, now you said non-edible foods. How did you say that? That's kind of an interesting <laughs> distinction. Edible products. So <laughs> non- you, for example. Non-food bread, edible non-food products. products. So they're, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly. kind of cute. Non-food edible products. Like, that's, a, that's a huge statement right there. We've got a culture that subsists on non-food edible products. Is that right? Or, or you can even shorten it and say edible products. And in fact, 40 to 60% of the average American's calories are coming from edible products, which are things that just didn't exist in the world up until recently. So, so basically, if you're living on something that's edible but it's not food, you got some problems. Is that the idea? And it also takes us down a really interesting rabbit hole that questions the entire definition of food because you know what? Diet soda has no calories in it, but we still call it food. So what, what differentiates yeah. that from cough syrup or from aspirin? <laughs> Like, they're all just chemicals that change your body, right? <laughs> Would you say that it's a, there's a huge proportion of what we eat is not even, couldn't even be considered food then? Like, like probably 50, 60, 70%. That would include hamburgers and fast food and that kind of thing, McDonald's hamburgers. Just because it's edible doesn't mean it's food, in other words. Exactly. That, cocaine is edible. Cigarette. I mean, you can, right. you can inhale tobacco. So if you can put right. n- nicotine into your body, that doesn't mean you should. And that is the cause of the obesity epidemic. The cause of the obesity epidemic is not gluttony and sloth. It's eating non-food that breaks your body, just like putting non-gasoline in your car would yeah. break your car. That is an awesome statement. Thanks, John. Hey, hang tight. we got to take a break here, and then we'll, we'll finish up. we got one more segment. We're talking to Jonathan Baylor. Fascinating guest. Uh, his book is The Calorie Myth. His website is the calorie, uh, caloriemythbook.com. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Pharmacist Ben Fuchs has learned the importance of good fats for good health. Good fats are essential fatty acids, and they're called essential because they're necessary for good health. That's why he uses Ultimate EFAs from Longevity. Among the fats, the most powerful are two fats that are referred to as essential fatty acids. Now, nothing in the world of nutrition is more important than essential fatty fatty acids. The word essential means you better get it in your diet or you're in big trouble. Essential fatty acids are perhaps the most multifunctional and versatile of all the essential nutrients. Essential fatty acids are not just important for the heart. They're important for everything in the body. To get the essential fatty acids that are so important to your body, order Ultimate EFAs from Longevity by calling 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Or on the web at brightsidebed.com. That's brightsidebed.com. Order today. So we decided to upgrade the look of our home. You know, improve the curb appeal. We decided to add the look of stone to the exterior. We really like the stacked stone look. Yeah, but when I checked into the price, it was ridiculous. No way could we afford it. Then a friend told me about Genstone. G-E-N-S-T-O-N-E. Genstone comes in lightweight panels made of polyurethane. They've actually engineered the hassle out of installation. No mortar, no mesh. It was easy. Even I could do it. We just screwed the panels to the wall and it looks like stone. Stone. I mean, it really looks like stone. Yeah, from the box to the wall in minutes. We love the look of our home now. And Genstone is durable, comes with a 25-year warranty, and offers additional R-value for insulation. If you want the look of stone at a price you can afford, call Genstone. At 855-955-STONE. Trust me, you'll save money. And you'll love the look. 855-955-STONE. That's 855-955-7866. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, thanks to Dan Pilla, you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. 
With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. We are the premier independent talk radio network. The Genesis Communications Network. GCN. All right, we're back on the bright side. Got one more segment to talk to Jonathan Baylor. We busted the calorie myth. We busted some mythology about protein. We busted some mythology about fats. Let's see what we missed here, Jonathan. Carbohydrates. There's a guy out, a uh, guy who wrote a book called The Starch Solution. He says that, that uh, starch is the way to go if you want to lose weight. He literally says this in the book, The Starch Solution. He's a doctor, and he shall go unnamed. What's your take on carbs, uh, carb restriction, uh, reducing carbs, or high-carb, low-carb diets as far as it has to do with losing weight? Carbs, protein, and fat, as we mentioned, are neither good nor bad intrinsically. We have to look at what's coming along with them. So from a carbohydrate perspective, there's four essential things to human life. Essential amino acids, essential fatty acids, essential vitamins, and essential minerals. Bottom line is that from a carbohydrate perspective, and this is math, this is not a debatable, because you can take amount of protein, fat, uh, vitamins, and minerals, and divide by the total number of calories, the most the, the carbohydrate that provide us with the most essential substances are non-starchy vegetables and low-sugar fruits. Starches and sweets are some of the least essential nutrient-dense foods on the planet. So anyone who says you should eat more of what is non-essential for health and less of what is essential for health, I'm not really sure how they got their medical life. Well, I agree with that, and you can Google the guy's name. It's, the book is called The Starch Solution, and we won't, we won't pick on him any, anymore. We picked on him a lot on this program. So much more I want to talk about. Uh, well, talk, us, talk to us a little bit about, about exercise. And people say, oh, you've got to exercise more if you want to lose weight. And you don't necessarily believe in that uh, based on your uh, book, the chapter, The Six Principles of Smarter Exercise. Tell us about smarter exercise as opposed to just plain old exercise. The reason we're told to exercise more is because we've been led to believe that this is all about calories, and the more you exercise, the more calories you burn. That's true. But exercising obsessively is just like starving yourself. It's just another way of doing it. The key to long-term health and fitness is not starvation, either by eating less or by exercising more. It's by causing hormonal change, which enables your body to heal itself. And the way you do that via exercise is via two forms of exercise. One isn't even exercise. It's just being active. It's being a person. It's standing up walking, taking the stairs. That's not exercise. That's being a human being. <laughs> we didn't have elevators for a long time. So taking the stairs is just what you're supposed to do. And then there is very short duration, very high intensity, no impact, safe exercise, such as interval training, and such as very heavy resistance training. These are the forms of exercise that cause hormonal change, which causes lasting metabolic benefit. And you can't do a lot of them because they're so intense. So like a five, ten minute workout kind of thing. Exactly, and you're not stopping after 10 minutes because you're lazy. You're stopping after 10 minutes you're because burnt. doing 11 minutes is impossible. Yeah, so you want to max out on your exercise and do it intensely. Exactly, but also with the 
high safety. This is easy to, for people to hear this and think, oh, I'm going to, like, take a 300-pound tire and throw it over my head. No, 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 no. Like, imagine getting on an upright stationary bike, and instead of pedaling for 60 minutes, simply getting warmed up and then cranking the resistance up so high that you have to stand up on the bike like you're pedaling up a hill, doing that as hard as you can, not fast, but yeah. hard, because the resistance is so high for 30 to 60 seconds, taking a two-minute break and repeating, and in 10 minutes, you're done, and you put no impact on your joints. That's awesome. That's a great kind of, that's my kind of workout. Ten, minute, ten minutes a day, four days a week, right? So does that sound good? Intense, though. That four days a week, especially if you're going uh, into weight weight training, is, is impossible. So we're talking even 10 to 20 minutes a day, once or twice a week, wow. if you can bring the intensity high enough. All right. You know, we don't.